quo, what do you think? We looked at uh, the Philippines in that last lecture. Who would imagine they'd have the largest geothermal complex in the world? Maybe not for long, huh? But uh, Canada's got some stuff going on. Hey everyone, my name is Raymond Popolo, and I'm here today to talk to you about something that's really important for our future and is known as geothermal energy. Just a little background on myself. I conduct most of my research for the Canadian government since I work at Environment Canada. I was tasked with identifying a more greener source of energy that will serve as a good alternative for coal-fired electricity generation. I believe geothermal energy fills that role. Now, as you may know, our world is in an energy crisis. There are always reports of how that if things continue the way they are today with regards to the burning of fossil fuels, then we will eventually run out of these important resources. Geothermal energy is a clean, green, and definitely renewable resource that utilizes the heat and energy found near the Earth's core. Also, unlike most of the current forms of energy, there aren't any negative health effects nor any ecological impacts associated with it. This is why I propose it to be a better option than the current methods such as coal firing and will demonstrate how the technology applies to Canada as well. It is interesting to note that the concept of using the Earth's natural heat and energy is not new. In fact, the history of geothermal power can be traced back to over 10,000 years ago to the American Paleo Indians at their settlement in hot springs. They used the hot springs for activities including bathing and heating, and it is also believed the springs were seen as a healing source. This practice is still widely done today in many countries around the world, especially Japan. However, since the early 1900s, this source of energy has been harnessed in order to create electricity, heating and cooling systems, as well as hot water systems for both residential and commercial use around the world. Instead of explaining the entire process, our partners at Image Maker Incorporated have developed a very useful and educational animation that explains how it all works. Let's take a look. Geothermal energy gives us a steady supply of electrical power with minimal environmental impact. Here is the basic process. Water in underground reservoirs is heated to high temperatures by magma. Production wells drilled up to 10,000 feet below the Earth's surface tap into this hot fluid. Under its own pressure, the fluid flows through these wells toward the surface. As it travels, the pressure lessens, causing a small amount to become steam. Together, the hot fluid and steam move through a surface pipeline to a wellhead separator where the pressure is reduced. Here, most of the fluid vaporizes and flashes into high pressure steam. Any fluid not flashed into steam moves to a standard pressure crystallizer to produce standard pressure steam. Remaining fluid is then flashed at a lower pressure to create low pressure steam. All steam created in the plant is sent to a turbine on site. The force of the steam spins the turbine's blades, which turns a shaft connected to an electrical generator. An electrical charge is created and directed to a transformer, where the voltage is increased and sent down power lines. Any fluids not flashed into steam return to the underground reservoir, where, in time, they will be reheated and reused. Geothermal energy, a simple, clean, and renewable energy source. Let's look at the advantages of geothermal energy. As you can see, it is a closed system. This means it does not emit harmful pollutants like coal-fired electricity. This means no greenhouse gas emissions and no acid rain. This is evidence on the shown graph which compares geothermal energy to other current energy sources with geothermal energy clearly more safe for the health of all things on this planet and to combat global warming. This is in addition to the fact that unlike these other sources, it is completely renewable and sustainable. The electricity produced is also more available as fossil fuel power plants produce electricity 65 to 75 percent of the time compared to 90 percent from geothermal power plants. This means it is more efficient in its energy production. 
This is also true when compared to other types of renewable energy sources, such as wind and solar power. As evidence on this chart, none of the other renewable energy sources even come close to the efficiency of geothermal electricity. It can therefore be said, without a doubt, that it is the leading renewable energy in the world. Also, unlike any other renewable source, geothermal electricity can be continually produced 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, and is not dependent on the weather. The last advantage That's what you call your base load, huh? advantage is that geothermal energy also has many uses other than the production of electricity, such as heating and cooling, and as a source of hot water for homes and businesses. This means that geothermal energy is effectively a much cheaper alternative to traditional methods of obtaining heating, cooling, and hot water. In fact, it is uncommon to see electricity bills slashed by 80%. This also means that less electricity from non-renewable sources would be required as a whole. In addition, this method of geothermal energy can be scaled down to either single homes or entire neighborhoods. Now let's talk about the disadvantages of geothermal energy. The reason that geothermal energy systems have not taken over as the most dominant source of energy in the world is due to two main reasons, initial drilling costs and more importantly, location. Initial drilling costs of geothermal energy plants are definitely a concern for most governments have when deciding to opt out of a geothermal energy project. Even though most costs of initial drilling are offset by the very low cost in operating a geothermal plant within a few years, there's still a great amount of reluctance in adopting the technology as the primary source of obtaining electricity. This reluctance could be associated with the fact that in order to utilize geothermal technology for electricity generation it requires the Earth's crust to be thin, which is found mostly along fault lines where the Earth's tectonic plates meet. This means that for many countries, such as Iceland and Japan, it is a very ideal electrical source, and thus, conversely, for other countries, it would be less than desirable as the prominent source. This is why, in Canada and the United States, most electricity generation from geothermal sources is on the western coast. But uh, remember, we have enhanced geothermal systems. Or and also the median temperature aspect of harvesting your median temperature at the foundation of your every building in the world has one thing in common they all have a foundation they have some contact with the earth and that's where your median temperature comes in while it may seem that Canada is simply one of those countries that do not have many fault lines as we only have them in British Columbia and the Yukon this does not mean geothermal energy is not used for heating cooling and hot water systems. The latter three uses do not need nearly as hot of a temperature given off from the division of tectonic plates as found along fault lines. Thus, these three uses are steadily increasing in Canada. However, since we at Environment Canada wish to show that geothermal energy will provide an excellent alternative to producing electricity than coal firing within Canada itself, there must be another way. Luckily, up until recently, it truly was impossible for Canada to use this resource to the best of its potential until now with the development of Enhanced Geothermal Systems, or EGS for short. Our partners at Google.org have created an animation demonstrating how this new technique works. Enhanced Geothermal Systems Technology, or EGS, could extend the potential of geothermal energy to almost anywhere on Earth. Here's how EGS works. A well is drilled several kilometers into the Earth's hot crust. Water is injected to fracture the rock, creating thousands of small pathways for water to flow and be heated. The hot water and steam are piped to the surface to power a turbine, generating electricity. The water is then recycled back into the hot rock in a continuous loop. The reason enhanced geothermal is exciting is because it's a reliable form of energy. It's providing baseload continuous power with high availability. It's essentially emissions free and therefore carbon neutral. And it has this 
distributed indigenous nature so that it's not just in the southwestern parts of the U.S. It is extendable and scalable uh, on a national scale. The earth is going to be hot. <laughs> you can bank on it. As you can see, we at Environment Canada, as well as many other environmental groups such as Kangea, believe that geothermal energy is the future for Canada's production of electricity and a replacement of the dangerous coal firing method. I hope you have enjoyed this small presentation on a big issue that our world is facing today and hope that you get involved. For further inquiries, please visit our website. To end it off, I leave you with this poem. Oil fields will tumble, coal and gas will crumble. But heat from Mother Earth is here to stay. Thank you. Nice. Raymond. Very cool, Raymond. Very nice. So you're, you're aware of that. You're taking your introduction to geothermal energy. And you're hopefully getting some data from your median Earth temperature lab. Meeting your temperature lab, look for your submission link. Welcome to one of Cal Energy's geothermal power plants. Unlike other power plants that rely on coal or other fossil fuels to create electricity for homes and businesses, geothermal power plants use superheated fluids from the Earth's geothermal resources to generate electricity. The natural heat of the Earth creates geothermal resources. This heat comes from molten rock called magma, located at the Earth's core, deep below the geothermal resource. Over thousands of years, rainwater seeps through cracks in the Earth's surface and collects in underground reservoirs. The magma heats the water until it becomes a superheated fluid. To reach the superheated fluid, wells are drilled 5,000 to 10,000 feet below the surface of the Earth. These wells, called production wells, bring the superheated fluid to the Earth's surface, where it can be used to generate electricity for homes and businesses. This geothermal power plant uses crystallizer reactor clarifier technology, a process that turns the geothermal superheated fluid into steam while removing solids from it. The steam is used to drive a turbine and generate electricity. All remaining geothermal fluids are injected back into the reservoir for reuse. Well, there, there's a little update here. They're also finding that a lot of the solids, that, when they uh, precipitate the solids out. The, a lot of the solids are usable uh, minerals and uh, chemical compounds, sulfites, nitrites, uh, the uh, gold. One of the uh, developments out in Nevada, the, uh, they were drilling and the, they had to run the drill, get the, pull the drill head back up they had to trip the drill head. Remember our drilling segment? And uh, this is an expensive thing to do, but uh, the drill head was busted. They brought it up and it was uh, clogged up with something. Guess what? They'd hit gold. They struck a pure gold vein and it, the gold's kind of gooey and it had, they wouldn't cut through the gold. So they, their focus changed. Their emphasis changed from uh, geothermal to mining that gold. Under its own pressure, superheated fluid from the geothermal resource flows naturally to the surface through production wells. As the liquid flows toward the surface, the pressure decreases, causing a small portion of the fluid still within the well to separate or flash into steam. At the surface, the superheated fluid and steam mixture flows through surface pipelines and into a wellhead separator. Inside the separator, the pressure of the superheated fluid is reduced. This causes a large amount of the superheated fluid to rapidly vaporize and flash into high-pressure steam. The geothermal fluid that is not flashed into steam in the wellhead separator flows to a second vessel called a standard pressure crystallizer, where an additional amount of standard pressure steam is produced. 
The flash process continues in the low pressure crystallizer. The remaining fluid is again flashed, this time at a lower pressure to produce low pressure steam. All of the low pressure, standard pressure, and high pressure steam is delivered to a turbine. The fluid that is not flashed into steam flows into the reactor clarifier system and is then returned to the geothermal reservoir through injection wells. Turbines are the primary piece of equipment used to transform geothermal energy into mechanical energy. Pressurized steam created from the geothermal superheated fluid flows through pipelines to large steam turbines. The force and energy in the steam is used to spin the turbine blades. The turbines turn a shaft directly connected to an electrical generator. An electrical charge is created when magnets rotate within the generator. Large copper bars carry the electrical charge to a step-up transformer outside the plant. Within the transformer, the voltage is increased before the power is sent to the power lines that carry it to homes and businesses. Geothermal energy is a sustainable resource because with proper management, a geothermal resource can remain a renewable source of energy. Water trapped deep within the earth will naturally replace the superheated fluid that is drawn from the geothermal resource through surface wells. However, it is possible to deplete the geothermal resource by removing fluid faster than it can be naturally replaced. To help prevent this, the steam used in the geothermal power plant passes through a condenser that turns it back into fluid. At this stage, it's possible to recover minerals from the geothermal fluid before it's injected back into the earth. This condensed fluid, along with the fluid that did not flash to steam, is injected back into the underground reservoir. Magma naturally reheats the fluid so it can be used again. Yahoo! I think you're getting the idea now, huh? How it works. It's right down there just waiting for us to harvest it. Let's take a look now at a, at a specific type of larger scale geothermal, a binary cycle power plant process. For large scale, this is the future. Water deep underground is heated by the Earth's natural heat. The heated water is brought to the surface and delivered to Racer's modular power generation array through pipes. The hot well water is then distributed to each of the 50 power generation units in the network in parallel via the large pipes feeding each row of 25 units. Each power generation unit produces its own power simultaneously from the hot well water. Here, the hot water from the production well enters each power generation unit. In this binary system, the well water does not come in contact with the turbine but rather its heat is transferred to a secondary working fluid binary system secondary working fluid as it passes through the coils in the heat exchange tank because the working fluid has a boiling point much lower than water the fluid flashes to vapor quickly at temperatures as low as 57 degrees Fahrenheit and moves upward passing through the turbine Pressure from the vapor spins the turbines, which in turn spins the electric generator. Each unit can generate about 280 kilowatts of power. By combining the power from all 50 units, about 11 megawatts of net power is generated in this first phase of the plant. The well water, now about 70 degrees cooler, is passed to injection wells where it is pumped back into the aquifer. There, it is heated once again by hot rocks deep underground and circulated back to the surface through production wells to repeat the power generation cycle. After leaving the turbine, the vapor moves upward into the condenser tank. Here, 
cooling water enters the condenser from the cooling towers and circulates through coils in the condenser tank and cools the vapor allowing it to condense back into a fluid collecting at the bottom of the tank. The cooling water enters the tank at about 67 degrees, but after cooling down the working fluid, it leaves the tank at about 87 degrees. The working fluid now flows down the tank outlet to the pump, where it is repressurized and injected back into the heat exchange tank to repeat the process. In order to be used again, the water is returned to the cooling towers where it is cooled back down to 67 degrees. It is important to note that the three fluid systems of hot well water, cooling water from the cooling tower, and system working fluid remain in their own separate loops and never mix, so there is no contamination and no emissions. The electric power produced by each pod of five power generation units flows to a power transformer where the voltage is increased in preparation for transmission over the power grid. The transformers serve all 50 power generation units. The power travels through underground power lines to the switch yard. Here the power is sent to the power grid via transmission lines. As future phases of the plant come online, a substation with additional transformers will be added to boost voltage to 138 kilovolts to accommodate additional power. There you have it, binary power, geothermal binary power system.